It's that time again. The annual conference of the American Society of Ag Consultants, otherwise known as ASAC, is going to be held in Fort Myers, Florida, this November 4th and 5th. Kirk Covington is one of nine professionals who will address the conference. The other speakers who will cover a wide range of topics represent Florida Farm Bureau, Florida Citrus Commission, University of Tennessee Institute of Agriculture, National Ag Law Center, Risk Mitigators and Advisors, Tyler Associates, as well as the lead economist for dairy at Cobank, and myself, Chrissy Wozniak, from North American Ag. The day and a half of presentations will be followed by ag tours on Tuesday afternoon at Echo Farms, one of my favorite places here in Fort Myers. Attendees will experience farming at its most creative, with unique demonstrations, plants, and techniques being used to help farmers and urban gardeners in developing countries. A second tour at ECHO will showcase simple technologies that can improve food, water, and shelter for millions of people. A third tour of a hydroponic grower is also being planned. For more information and to register, visit www.agconsultants.org. That's www.agconsultants.org. See you there. Today's Ag Spotlight episode is sponsored by Energrow. Energrow's oil seed pressing system helps farmers crush their feed costs. The easy way to make fresh, homegrown, high-quality meal plus expeller pressed oil right on the farm. The fully automated Turnkey Crush Pro is easy to set up and run 24-7. To learn more, go to energrow.ca. Hi, and welcome to the North American Ag Spotlight. I'm Chrissy Wozniak. My guest today comes from a sixth-generation farm near Ellsworth, Illinois, that's been in the family since 1892. He's a graduate graduate of Purdue University with a degree in agriculture engineering and has previously served as a field service manager, crop production sales specialist, and cash crop specialist for New Holland. Today, he's joining me to talk about the Guardian Front Boom Sprayer. I'd like to welcome the Guardian Sprayer Marketing Manager for New Holland, North America, Alex Caldwell. Welcome, Alex, and thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. So first of all, tell me a bit about your background and about your sixth generation family farm. Not everyone can say that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, small little town right between Bloomington Normal and Champaign, Illinois, for those uh, that might know where that is. Um, All corn and soybeans been in the family for a long time. Uh, pretty modest operations sometimes by today's standards. Uh, my cousin just recently took it over. So it was my uncle and my dad here. Uh, and my cousin's taking that over. So me being the uh, the younger of the two, I had to go find something else to do, which has driven me to um, going to Purdue, like you said, uh, studying and staying focused on ag. Um, always grew up loving being a carpet farmer with the little tractors and stuff. Uh, and now I just get paid to do the same thing. So it's been great so far. Oh, that's awesome. So what can growers expect from this elevated lineup of Guardian Front Boom boom Sprayers? So uh, the main thing that I want to impress on people, besides the stickers getting a little bit of an update on the side of the machine, you're really not going to notice a difference in the iron of these machines. We didn't touch the horsepower. We didn't touch paint or uh, um, tank sizes. We didn't touch boom sizing, any of that. Uh, you're really going to notice the changes when you jump up into the cab of this thing. So it is an entire technology overhaul. My joke at all the farm shows this been this year has been anywhere you can press a button on this machine is different. I think I counted and there are 13 buttons that are the same on this one. And one of those is the battery disconnect switch as you're walking up the ladder. So if you're at the fill station or in the cab, the technology has been completely refaced uh, and we're excited to bring that to market this year. That's awesome. And so anyone that's not familiar with tank sizes and boom width, what, what are you offering? Uh, so tank sizes go on 200 gallon increments from a thousand gallons up to 1600 gallons um, across two different chassis sizes, which is split right down the middle. So a thousand and twelve hundred is on our smaller chassis and 14 and 1600 gallon is on our larger chassis. Uh, Our boom sizes vary from 90 foot up to 135 with stops at uh, 100, um, 120, and 132 uh, with there. And you can put any size boom on either of our chassis. So there's no restrictions for tank size and boom widths or any of those sorts of things. Awesome. And what's the main advantage of a front versus rear boom sprayer? 
So uh, the big thing that we always like to talk about with front boom versus rear boom, and we're going to talk in blanket statements that are kind of across the industry right now. Um, uh, the main benefit of a front boom design is that the boom's in the front, which is simplifying a little bit too much, but it's right there in the name, right? So you can see that boom the entire time that you're spraying. You're not having to worry about what's going on behind you and turning your neck constantly throughout the day to check and see the job that you're doing back there. You're very aware of that. You get um, to operate in a little bit more ease with uh, boundary spraying, by being able to look right out your side window and know whether or not that breakaway is going to be contacting those trees, power lines, anything that's hanging around the borders of the field. Um, we also get to pull into corners uh, when you're doing a boundary turn. So it eliminates a lot of K turns through the field where anybody that's parked in a small parking lot, even if you've never operated a sprayer before, trying to get a vehicle that's way too big into a smaller space, right? We've all had to turn two or three times. So we can make a uh, pull, carry all of our speed, our spraying speed right into the corner of a field, back that thing up into a simple L turn and then pull right out of there and keep moving. So there's just a lot of efficiencies to be gained by having that in the front. Um, in addition, we don't fight with the same weight distribution issues uh, that certain rear boom sprayers do out in the marketplace. That's just inherent with the design. So you are carrying 50% of your weight on the front axle and 50% of the weight on the rear axle. So we have a very, very well-balanced machine in the marketplace. So can you tell me about the, the new technological advances? What are some of the highlights? Yeah, so a couple of the main features that we're going to talk about is uh, the Model Year 23 Guardian Sprayer is uh, really the first connected vehicle from the factory. Uh, the first time the sprayer has been a connected vehicle for New Holland from the factory, meaning that it ties into um, our third party portal, which would be our uh, PLM Connect portal. So it allows a uh, grower to transfer all of his coverage maps, transfer all of his AB lines back down to the machine and back and forth and be able to do that wirelessly, either from his desktop back at the office. Um, he can manage quite a bit of that data, even over his phone or his tablet, or it kind of meets you wherever you are. Um, and I say third party because uh, with our, our new um, Raven acquisition that we're really, really excited about, we're playing and transferring data up to the Slingshot portal as well. Um, which is just a different way to visualize all the same data. Uh, those two tools are kind of catered to two different customer types. My general rule of thumb is that a custom applicator thinks about uh, spraying and fields and stuff in terms of jobs and efficiency. So he's wanting to know how many acres he can get covered in a day. And the slingshot portal really lends itself um, very, very well to that type of mindset when viewing that data. Whereas uh, the PLM Connect, the New Holland branded um, portal, uh, looks at those resources in a way that a, a farmer or a grower or somebody making a, a farm manager, someone along those lines is making decisions and is wanting to view the field more holistically and look at every single pass over that same field. Um, so we can transport that data over to either portal. The other two big ones um, is Raven's VSN camera steering system is factory fit now. So we've had aftermarket wow. parts where dealers or customers could buy it after the fact and install it. And it was plug and play. Uh, but we've brought that into the factory with the full under canopy kit. So now we're a high clearance sprayer that can spray uh, or be steered um, all season long. Um, and the efficiencies gained there is you're not having to white knuckle drive this thing to hold it down the rows anymore, right? It's right. steering itself. So you're just taking that much more off the operator. Uh, you're gaining efficiency by maintaining the same speed and different varying levels of visibility and everything else, which is really nice. Um, and the last one that I'd love to talk about is the IntelliSpray 2 um, pulsing spray system. So we've had the original IntelliSpray for a long, long time. IntelliSpray 2, anybody that goes and looks at it will see that it's Raven's Hawkeye 2 rebranded with a few extra features for us. Uh, but we're increasing pressure ratings and flow capacity through that new nozzle. It's drawing uh, less electricity from the machine. Um, we're coming standard with the heavy duty poppets now so we can handle uh, harsher chemicals and things that are going through as the chemistry keeps changing for what farmers are spraying through the fields. We wanted to make uh, a system standard that you didn't need to worry about going and spraying the different things through and trying to keep it as maintenance free as possible. Um, as well as 
I'm a firm believer that if the good Lord didn't make it, you're going to have trouble every once in a while. So I do love to talk about service futures as well, being a service rep once good. upon a time. Um, there's brand new diagnostic lights. We're running closed loop between. So if anything ever does go wrong with this system, the NCVs have lights on them that do a great job of localizing that problem. The first generation system really did two banks of nozzles. It basically split the boom in half and went two different directions. And sometimes you really only knew if the, if the, um, the issue was on the left half of the boom or the right half of the boom, and you had to go look and right. And with a 120 foot boom, that's 60 feet where the problem could be yeah. with the diagnostic lights and things that we have now, it can really narrow it down to, hey, your problem is between these two nozzles. So wow, we went from locating a problem 60 feet somewhere to if your nozzle spacing is 15 inches, it's this nozzle, this nozzle, or the wires between these two. Um, and it really tells a guy right where he needs to go look. Yeah, those sounds sound like great upgrades. That's awesome. And as we all know, the cost of inputs are are high and accuracy and efficiency have never been more important than right now. So how is this combination of technology and iron helping growers with application accuracy of their crop inputs? So uh, accuracy ties right back to that IntelliSpray 2 system. Mm -hmm. So we um, have introduced a new pulse rate for this year where that system operates at 20 hertz. So we have finer control over that pulse timing um, really than anybody else that I've seen right now. Now there might be somebody out there that could disprove that or something. So I don't mean to step on anything, but it's certainly better than we've had in the past. I think we're touting something like two and a half times more accuracy with that system wow. to really micromanage that control. Also individual nozzle control now comes standard uh, with the IntelliSpray 2 system. So instead of being stuck with section valves that were you know, we, every boom comes plumbed with 10 sections and simple math tells us that that's roughly 12 feet of boom. We're again down to that granular 15 inches of nozzle control, which is becoming more and more standard out in the industry. We're not breaking ground um, there by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but in terms of efficiency, that's another place where the front boom sprayer really, really shines, right? So this is where for corn and soybean country, um, crop clearance really, really matters. And how many of these applications that machine can still go out in the field and do that you're not having to have custom done by somebody else that has a high clearance machine or having that application flowing on where you might even have less control than usual with that. And that high clearance machine partnered with that VSN, you know, I've driven corn rows and sprayed for days at a time. And at the beginning of the day, I might be doing 14, 15 miles an hour, but at the end of the day, you're tired, you're slowing down to make sure you're not hitting anything. You might be doing nine or 10. It's just kind of a natural progression. And I'm sure that there's a lot of people watching this that are a heck of a better operator than I am. But the VSN taking that system out, um, out of your hands in steering uh, for you means that you can be running that higher rate of speed all day long consistently and gaining that efficiency back and getting across that many more acres throughout the day. Yeah, that makes sense. And how does all of this technology help growers or applicators with making decisions in the field? So this is what rolls right back to that connected vehicle. So um, it seems like there's a lot of people out there that are really wanting to collect data for farmers. Mm -hmm. um, and there's different companies that are monetizing that in a different way and, uh, and um, selling that or helping farmers visualize it or growers or whomever is taking a look at this data, agronomists. And data just for data's sake isn't helpful if it's not actionable, right? Um, I, I want to make sure that anything we're presenting. So um, that's where I'm really excited. And we've got a lot of specialists out in the field to support our dealers and are training our dealers to where they're the experts on these portals that we offer as well. To a sprayer being connected is great right? It, it transfers all that. We make it as easy as possible, but we're trying to deliverable that in that in, um, in an actionable way to where when a farmer goes to our PLM Connect portal and visualizes this data, it compiles it in such a way that he and his trust advisors, whoever that might be uh, for his or her operation, uh, can sit down and take a look at this, right? So that application data is coming right back in. You can track your fuel usage on this machine and actually overlay how much fuel you're spending per per application um, when you're going across the field and just really understanding what it's costing you to go out throughout the field 
And then with uh, yield maps and things like that on the backside and, and uh, a grower knowing what he's got his acres and bushels contracted at, he can really drill down to his return on investment and really understand what's, what's paying, what's helping, uh, as opposed to what might be a little bit extra and something that he can look at uh, managing a little bit differently in the future. Yeah. And, and that's really important because, you know, data overload is a huge thing. So yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that, that, that it's giving you tools to really, you know, capture the data, the data that you need and not just for data's sake. It, exactly. That's, that's been the big thing. I mean, going back to the family farm that I still get back and help with as much as I possibly can, I enjoy going back, but working with my cousin and saying, okay, like, cool, man, you got all this extra data. Can we filter out some of the white noise and let's yeah. start with the basic stuff and make decisions based on that and then add layers back in. But Paying for too much information all at once is is money out the door if you're not going to use it to to make any changes around the operation. There's no problem sticking with what you've what you've always done, but don't spend more to do what you've always done, right? So, yeah, absolutely. And switching gears a little bit, uh, there are many fans of the Miller sprayer out there, and anyone familiar with the Miller Nitro series of front boom sprayers, they'll notice similarities. So, can you explain why this is? Yeah, absolutely. So back in the late 2000s, New Holland partnered with Miller. Um, so the, the uh, New Holland sprayers from back in that time frame were Miller's painted blue. Um, so New Holland was in an OEM partnership with Miller. Uh, they were building sprayers for us, painting them New Holland blue, and then we'd set up some of our dealers. Back in roughly the 2014 time range, um, New Holland uh, had been a great partnership. Um and uh, New Holland decided to acquire the Miller Company. So these sprayers are made in the same factory that the Miller sprayers always were in St. Nazian's, Wisconsin. And now that we're here on the backside of COVID, if anybody's interested, we are doing plant tours and things again. So get in touch with your dealer and get those requests in. We love hosting people up there. Um, but the New Holland and Miller sprayers still coexist running down the same line. It's just instead of a Miller being painted blue for New Holland's, we now own both and we still make them in same color. So there's no features that's withheld off of either machine. They're exactly the same machine. The model numbers, if you put them side by side, they're very, very easy to correlate and see uh, which machine matches up with which one. Um, and it's... Uh, just brand and preference in a, in a given market, what might make more sense to go in there. And it maintains flexibility to go into different markets and different places with both brands out in the marketplace. Yeah, that's right. And uh, it, what about evolution since uh, the acquisition? Has there, have there been any major changes since then? Not particularly. Um, they've get rolled into our process and things of that nature, but a lot of the same engineers are still up there. Um, so the same guy that was the original engineer on the old side engine nitro, if anybody's uh, memory goes that far back to the 2000 series, um, mm -hmm. he's still working up there. Uh, same engineering team, a lot of the same design folks, new processes, more purchasing power and a few more headaches. But um, it is nice to still have the, uh, the small town feel when you go up there to that plant. St. Nazian's is an itty bitty town up there in Northern Wisconsin. And I always love visiting. Um, they're just great folks up there to work with still to this day. So, yeah, that's good. And so what is typical lead time from order to delivery right now? So that is uh, a moving target, depending on the chassis mm -hmm. size and thing that we're looking at. I will tell you that the plant is really having to forecast um, with our suppliers about six months in advance. Mm -hmm. So they start to get cranky if there's an open order slot at least six months out there. So that's the best case scenario. So as the order board fills up, um, those lead times only really extend from there. So I know um, this month we just released our Q2 and Q3 allocations. So the rest of the model year. Mm -hmm. uh, those dealers would have just gotten those allocations to go and start talking to customers and closing in on any leads um, here yet this month and would be in work in progress. So I would tell you anywhere six months to a year right now uh, is really the lead time for one of these sprayers, depending on where we slot a configuration. Right. And that's pretty typical right now. Yeah. So on that track, how, how has New Holland really been handling and overcoming these supply chain issues in the last in the last year? 
or two. We've been now. doing really well. And I, and I have the little microcosm of one product in a much, much larger offering. Um, yes. And in, ter- in terms of total industry figures and anybody that's got market share data knows roughly how many sprayers we sell in a given year. So small numbers compared to tractors, combines, things of that nature. And that's just a percentage of total industry, right? Um, So we've been uh, very, very flexible when it comes to the sprayer line and the St. Nazian's plant. They've done a great, great job. Um, It is troublesome to the extent that we are, we have kept the line busy. And this is the case in uh, most of our plants from the conversations and things that I've had, but things are coming off the line 95% complete. And there's just one little widget uh, that was um, that it's missing and it can't ship without that one widget. It's something that's critical to the operation. And I say widget because it's something different all the time. So Mm -hmm. you might have five sprayers in the lot waiting for a certain piece. You get a shipment of 10 of those. Okay. So we go put the five out on the lot and the, and then the line can run, not short that component for five more sprayers. But in the meantime, you've run out of something else. Right. <laughs> um, so it's a different supplier. There's no one person that um, or one component that's really nagging. It's just a consistent different issue all the time, it seems like. Um, but we're moving and working through as best as we can um, in working with our dealers to prioritize the units that need to come out, those specifically that are retailed, especially as we're uh, focusing on season, um, and those that are just inventory units that aren't going to a customer yet. Uh, might get shuffled a little bit down the line and making sure we're communicating that with everybody every step of the way. So, yeah, yeah, that's good. And uh, so I have one last question for you. Why do you personally serve the agriculture industry? What's your greatest passion in all of it? Well, I've really enjoyed my roles getting to be customer facing. Um, And this is the first one where it's a little bit out of scope of my work to be customer facing, depending on farm show season. And I still try and get out as much as I can, but you rattled off um, all of the corporate jargon for my positions over the years, right? They pretty well boil down to, I was a service rep that was out there working for um, uh, helping to resolve customer issues in a timely fashion, working with our service departments uh, across our dealerships to make sure they they were equipped to handle. So working on training plans and things of that nature to make sure the technicians out in the field could really get these customers back up and running. And then I jumped ship and I went to the specialist side to where everything was brand new and working and people weren't yelling because things were breaking. Um, <laughs> yeah. it, you get a little bit jaded when you're a service rep for a long time and you're like, man, does just everything break all the time? Because that's the only people you're seeing and the only stuff you're talking about. But yeah. Going to the product specialist where I was a sprayer and seeding specialist and then added in combines and tractors there for a little while, getting to be with these customers on the front side of these interactions. So doing startups from somebody that never run our products before. So my passion is really the people. Um, And it's amazing getting to learn about different types of agriculture uh, from, again, my background being very, very narrow in the corn and soybean world to learning about something as simple as wheat growing for, um, or cover crops or going to a blueberry farm or a vineyard. And I'm there supposed to be talking about sprayers. And I was like, can I just geek out? And like, can you tell me how you grow blueberries? You know, (laughs) my wife and I have done vineyard tours over the years and they're walking through the grape fields. And, uh, I'm the type of guy that's stopping and was like, no, 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 we're going to talk about learning to grow grapes. We're going to dig in here. And my wife's like, there's wine and cheese in that building right there. (laughs) <laughs> and you are holding everybody up. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to learn how to grow grapes. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. So um, that's really where the passion comes from. So, you, know, you know, I went to school um, for engineering and I found out that I just liked people too much to sit in a cubicle all the time. So, um, and that's not making fun of our engineers, but if they see this, I'm coming for you. So, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's really the people that I get to work with and help um, on a day-to-day basis. So that's, that's really what drives me to continue to work in the ag industry. Yeah, that's great. And, and I agree. I'm, I'm a people person too. So, so that's why, you know, I have a podcast. I make people talk to me every day. So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So where can people find more information? Uh, would we'll drive you to, um, newholla.com to see our website. Uh, we have a launch video that does a walkthrough on YouTube. If you go to the new Holland YouTube channel, um, and the rest of our social media handles. So we're on Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram. I'm a little bit delinquent. I don't stay as much up on social media as maybe I should. 
uh, with a marketing uh, with a marketing title. But w- pretty much anywhere you find people, you can find us, and uh, we're happy to meet people wherever. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Alex, for joining me today. Great conversation. Great insight into this into these prayers. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah. And thanks to all who are watching or listening. If you want to learn more, the links are provided in the show notes. We also just released the latest episode of What Color Is Your Tractor featuring the story of New Holland, which can be found at whatcolorisyourtractor.com. Don't forget to subscribe to North American Egg Spotlight YouTube, Rumble, Telegram, or Egg Fuse channels. And the podcast is available on Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts and have a great day. Thanks so much for listening to today's Egg Spotlight episode, where we put the spotlight on people and companies doing great things for the agricultural industry. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Stitcher, or on your favorite podcasting platform and give us a five-star review. You can also follow us on YouTube and Rumble to see the video version of Egg Spotlight. Also, head on over to NorthAmericanAg.com to subscribe to our Industry Connect update newsletter. If you're interested in advertising opportunities, email us at connect at NorthAmericanAg.com. Thanks for listening. Our newest podcast by North American Egg is called What Color Is Your Tractor? The stories behind the egg brands you love and the egg brands you love to hate. Hosted by me, Chrissy Wozniak. We take a deep dive into the companies that have built modern agriculture. Subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform. Go to whatcolorisyourtractor.com. Available on Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts.